Catherine. It's my privilege to welcome one of our alums to the stage, that is Edmund Moore. He's more than just an alum or an accomplished scientist who worked at major pharmaceutical industry. He developed clinical trials. He's an expert in regulatory uh, as it impacts medicine and, and new healthcare opportunities for startups. He's also been one of our entrepreneurs in residence, guiding numerous companies in their journey to start businesses from the University of Illinois and helping many of our translational research centers. But he also comes from a family with lineage to the University of Illinois and with a strong history of farming and agriculture. So this is our eighth opportunity to have the chance from the generosity of the Moore family to give out an agriculture innovation prize to a promising startup company here at the research park in the University of Illinois. But each time we do this, to see the impact that those awards have had on the companies that grow here in our community is just extraordinary. And we're so grateful to have partners like Ed who make that possible. If you are one of the Ed Moore Prize winners from an ag tech company, if anybody could raise their hand or stand, I see some, or sense I'm gonna point out, um, Telltale I'm gonna point out, Eric from Harvest IQ I'm gonna point out, and um, we are excited that there's gonna be one more after today. So please join me in welcoming Edwin Moore and the Edwin Moore Prize. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, it's a real honor to be here, as always, every year, to be able to share in all of the great innovation that takes place, not just for, for the awards that are given out, but also for everything that all of you are doing, as you've evidenced this morning with, with the panel discussions that we've had, and that I think we'll see this afternoon as well. But my, my grandfather, uh, Edwin Moore, graduated from the University of Illinois 100 years ago, actually. It's about this year, that's 100 years, and um, he in the College of Agriculture. Um, and he, uh, he didn't grow up on a farm, but when he graduated from, uh, from college, he persuaded his father to buy him a farm in Will County, and uh, then he was uh, able to implement a lot of the innovative uh, practices that he had learned while he was a student here at the University of Illinois into agriculture, and back then, that was things like challenges, like for instance, um, we're no longer gonna use horses, we're gonna use tractors and machinery to, to farm. And so, but those were the innovative practices then. Um, he then proceeded throughout his career to implement new innovative and develop new innovative practices on the farm that helped to introduce those practices to other farmers in, in the community. So. He spread the word about you know, the new things that were coming and the new abilities. And so innovation was always a very important part of our family. And my father, who um, then worked the farm, and my uncle also, um, and my brothers uh, and, and brother-in-law who were participating in the farm, all ex uh, adopted that innovative uh, practice. And so when um, I had the opportunity to um, create and Create, oh, and by the way, most of those, uh, many of those were University of Illinois alums uh, as well as many other of, of the family members. Um, so I had the opportunity to create an endowment. And when I did, um, I met with Laura and, Lo and we said, well, what should we, you know, what can we potentially use this for? And she suggested that we couple this with the Ag Tech Summit and create an Ag Innovation uh, Award. And so as as Laura said, we've been giving this now for eight years, and I have to say that all of those, the folks that you saw stand here, as well as the others who have received um, that award, I keep track of them from and touch base from time to time, and they are doing amazing things with um, the technology and the product ideas that they, they developed. And so uh, I'm really impressed by the selection of those companies that have received it. So thanks again to Laura and to the Research Park staff for for choosing these outstanding uh, candidates who have who have received this award um, and this year's uh, award winner is is no exception. Um, it, this year's war award winner is Hypercell Technologies and they are doing amazing things and I'm, they're going to talk about this. I'm not going to try to to uh, describe exactly what they're doing, but 
Um, it, it is amazing. So I hope that we can continue to keep up this tradition of awarding new innovative startup companies with technologies um, that will our, that will meet our original goal, and that was to improve productivity in farming and in food processing and supply fooding, food for uh, all of those who are in great need of, of uh, the, these resources. So um, I'm going, I'd like to welcome Hypercell Technologies to the stage and uh, receive the award. The goal of Hypercell Technologies is to produce rapid and accurate diagnostics for food safety and animal health applications. What we're developing here is really a process and that involves taking a sample, doing a really quick sample preparation process and getting that sample into our proprietary reader device. And all of that we expect will be able to provide results in about one hour, so same day results for the end user. One of the issues that really motivated us to start working on animal health is that when you're on a farm and an animal gets sick, you need to take a sample from that animal, send it to a central lab, and then only a few days later will you get that result back. But in that time, that animal has continued to be sick, spread that disease amongst the herd, and now your problem is much worse and you have less time to deal with it. First Lab for Hypercell started here at the university in this incubator in Enterprise Works, and it's it's really been a great experience for us. Uh, we have a lot of the university resources in terms of hiring um, our first lab technician, um, as well as uh, getting supplies from the local storerooms and collaborating with some of the researchers on campus. We really envision this being in the hands of uh, many different types of end users. This could be anybody on the animal health side that is caring for an animal, but also on the food safety side. When we're developing our diagnostic, we wanna make sure that it's sensitive, accurate, reliable, robust, and rapid, hoping that this test not only help out somebody at a really large company, but also somebody at a very small family farm. I know we're going to have Bruno do a fireside chat later, so we'll be hearing more about Hypercell, but do you want to say a few words, just yes, a little bit yeah, about yes, the company, and thank you, Alex, for being in the video and working at Enterprise Works every day. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, listen, I just want to thank, first of all, the generosity of the Moore's family for, for this prize. Um, I want to say that we are very honored to be today, I mean, this year's recipient of this, uh, this award. Uh, also very blessed to have found a, a home here at Enterprise Works, and thank you very much. Um, the prize is mostly for, for the team, so you have seen uh, you know, Vanessa, Alex, and Terry, I would like to give them a big round of applause because they did, they did it. <laughs> uh, I want to also thank um, all the partners um, who have helped us uh, coming from, you know, an, an idea to where we are today, which is a product and a company. Um, uh, first of all, Enterprise Works, um, University of Illinois, Sarah Venture also, who helped us from the beginning to found our project. Um, but as, as we say, it takes a village. So we also um, are supported by uh, the Georgia Research Alliance from the state of Georgia, as well as Grow New York uh, from uh, the state of New York. So <laughs> thank you very much. Um, just two, two words about Hypercell. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more uh, you know, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, basically, what we are doing is that we are designing a rapid test that can identify the contaminant of the food chain to reduce the risk of uh, food poisoning. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, today, one out of six Americans suffer uh, of food poisoning. Uh, so let's say maybe we are like 600 of people here today. 100 of you guys will or have suffered from food poisoning. This is a big problem for the US, but it's also a worldwide issue. 600 million people every year suffer from that. 250,000 deaths. And what's interesting is that the statistic worldwide is one out of 10 people worldwide suffer from foodborne diseases, but one of the six in the US. And one of the reasons is that we are not testing enough. We are not testing correctly. The test we are doing today gives results too late, which means that we, saw, we sell food without having the results 
and having before we know if the food is, is uh, contaminated or not, which is a system that for me needs to change. And that's our big goal at Hypercell, and uh, it's starting here at um, uh, Enterprise Works. But now, as Ed say, I have a big uh, re responsibility to <laughs> do as well as the other companies. So, well, we'll see. Maybe I will come back uh, in a few years to tell you how we do. Well, thank you so much.